I must say I was very worried when uh, I heard that uh, Manda was going to go first and I was going to go second. Um, I can't come up to Manda's standard of um, making things happen and uh, bringing a real intellectual uh, analysis to uh, the subject. But what I can do is say a little bit about what we've been doing in Brecon Beacons National Park uh, about trying to put some of those ideas into practice and uh, trying to make a change at least at the destination level. Um, first thing I wanted to say is that our national parks in the UK are different from yours in Ireland and indeed most of the rest of the world. We always seem to like to do something completely different in the UK. Um, in fact, uh, our national parks are not owned by the state, they're not managed by the state, they're in private land ownership. We as a national park authority have some powers, we're the planning uh, control organization, uh, but mostly uh, we're, in, we're, we're given the opportunity to engage with people, work with them and um, find better ways of making the economy, the ecology and the communities all work together. We see tourism as being an essential part of sustainable development uh, in rural areas particularly, uh, just because it does speak to a very wide agenda of public policy objectives. It, the money, as you all know, spreads widely in the local economy. It doesn't disappear out too quickly. Um, and indeed, tourism, certainly in the national park, is based on the environment. And I see a sustainability cycle, and I do speak about sustainability rather than responsibility in terms of tourism, I suppose because we're based on environmental uh, concerns at the end of the day. Um, but there is a flow through from communities needing a strong economy that environment providing that economic asset and that being a motivation for people to work with us to protect the environment and that cycles through. So there are some basic motivations whereby tourism can actually engage with sustainability at a very profound level. A little bit about our place because I'm sure some of you won't know it. Uh, it's a low group a range of mountains, probably better called large hills really, um, in the south of Wales. Uh, but uh, as well as the mountains, got plenty of lowland places where people can enjoy the area. Lovely set of waterfalls down the south of the National Park uh, and uh, quite a mixed experience. And we have actually been, uh, we're now the fifth dark sky, international dark sky reserve in the world, which is rather fun. It's a really good place to come and watch the night skies. Just a little bit of background behind the destination, how it operates. Uh, we're in a strange situation in many ways uh, because it is a national park. Um, we're like a local authority in the authority, but not a local authority. The local authorities still collect the bins, run the schools, do social work, all those sort of things. They also all have tourism functions, whereas we're superimposed on top of their structures. and. Um, I like to say there's two countries because we worry about England as well as Wales, three Welsh regions, ten local authorities and 50 odd community councils. So it's a complex area and the only way we can make it work is by working closely in partnership with all those players. Otherwise the thing just comes to pieces. So we've established a destination partnership which oversees the management of the National Park as a tourism destination and critically it involves people from both the sort of vertical aims, if you like, of, of uh, public, private and voluntary sector, but also the horizontal ones of economy, environment and community. So we've set up structures to support sustainable development and that's quite a decent uh, graphic showing how it all fits together. We all have a role to play, we all have a stake in the tourism destination. The only way of doing, making that sort of thing work, as far as I'm concerned, is to agree a plan and then find out how to make it happen. So we've got a strategy and I'm talking about communities and particularly at the bottom there, community placemaking is very much part of our remit, very much part of destination management. The substance of what I want to talk about is uh, around a project we've had going for the past three years nearly now. It's due to come to an end in July. Uh, which is very sad, but that's the way of these projects. It's run under the Interreg programme, uh, which, as you may know, uh, you gather different people together from across, in our case, Northwest Europe, uh, different partners, form a, again, form a plan and then work together to implement it. Pleased to say there's two 
of those pointers in Ireland, uh, County Mayo, and I know we're uh, hearing from Mulrani and Eris later on today, um, and South Kerry Development Partnerships are both partners in that, um, that uh, Interreg project. It's actually based on experience we had in a previous Interreg project called Collaborate, which was very much about getting businesses together in different localities, forming clusters, uh, getting things done on the ground in terms of sustainability, sense of place and quality, as well as the ordinary, well, not ordinary, the extraordinary stuff you can do to um, give visitors a really, really good experience. So Rural Alliances is based on the concept of those clusters coming together with members of the local community and forming an alliance. And that's been a really positive experience for us all. It's meant that actually local people can start to define what they want out of tourism, what the, what the negative impacts they're prepared to accept and how they manage them, how you get more people to come along and engage in the things which you're happy that those visitors uh, undertake whilst they're with you. It's a reasonably sized project. It's £10 million pounds at the European level in terms of our work. It's a million euros. Um, it's, as I say, an alliance between businesses and community. We in Brecon Beacons have 12 of these alliances and uh, looking at managing tourism as well as developing uh, new stuff. Come back to it again. We develop a plan, get everybody signed up to it, get everybody enthusiastic about it, and then there is money around to actually make things happen. And it's, it's been a great three years, and we've been very pleased with the results. People have done all sorts of things. This is uh, Flandovery Sheep Festival, where they close the town centre and get sheep involved in all sorts of different things, activities during the over the weekend, uh, you can imagine there's wool spinning and sheep dogging and all the, all the different uh, uh, activities around sheep, which is the basis of Flandovery's economy. Tourism's there, but actually it's an agricultural town. Cycling, cycle festivals, uh, novel interpretation. This is just the bench beside the canal, but actually it's got interpretation built into it. Um, people had great fun inventing that. Uh, food trail, um, local people involved in, in producing local tourism literature. So it's, it's a very wide spectrum of uh, work which is involved. And this is actually a community opera event uh, which we held not long ago. There was a very famous Victorian opera singer who was in, lived in one part of the park and it was her centenary. So we managed to get everybody together and produce that event. But as you all know, um, working with local people. There is bags of enthusiasm there. All people need is a bit of support and some structure around you know, getting that plan together, getting everybody uh, supporting the um, process, uh, that there's money around to make things happen. Clearly, you've got to give it a bit of time because everybody's working part-time, uh, voluntarily, and therefore it's, it, it doesn't happen instantly. Uh, but at the end of, end of the day, you've got to shout about it, or perhaps sing about it if you can. In terms of other things we've done with Rural Alliances, um, of the, we've, there's a variety of outputs uh, from the project. Uh, one is this Community Al Enterprise Alliance model, um, which just helps plot the, the, the steps you have to go through to develop uh, an alliance like this. Uh, there's a thing called the Rural Vibrancy Measuring Index, so uh, communities are able to uh, assess what areas are, are, are most vibrant in their areas, which ones are weakest, and address um, actions towards uh, addressing those issues. Uh, governance, probably we've, the thing we've found most is that the whole thing is about governance. It's about getting, getting the governance right uh, at a local level, but also in our case at a destination level, and making sure all those bits mesh together. Um, I, I characterise it that there, we have the three legs of sustainability, but actually you've got to have the seat to hold those legs together on your three-legged stool, and governance is what holds those three together. We've got to be able to take real decisions about how to, how to move forwards, and if you haven't got the governance structures right, all the things that Manda was talking about tend to fall to pieces. Uh, money's obviously an issue, the toolkit on, on 
money, uh, skills, uh, people bringing to the group. Uh, if we can play a game to find out what those skills are, it's a really useful way of going about it. There's a set of tool cards of different things you can do to help develop a group. And all those are either now or will be very shortly um, up on our website at royal-alliances.eu. Uh, so uh, do have a look at that and um, hopefully you find some of those useful, <coughs> useful to you. Um, going back to the sort of more boring stuff, I was talking about governance earlier, um, the partnership building side of it has been absolutely critical. Um, bringing those communities, bringing those alliances into the central destination management story uh, is, is very important if they're not to feel isolated on their own and un unable to control what's happening at a wider level. So um, getting the communications between those communities and the centre is, is key. And as a result, we've ended up with an absolutely enormous partnership of uh, 54 members, I think might even be more now, uh, 36 organisations, five subgroups. It's, it's turned into something of a monster. Um, but we've recently appointed an independent chair, which is proving to be very helpful. Uh, and uh, it is a matter of making sure that those people are talking to each other in the most appropriate way. We would never get 50, 54 people in a room together, but we do get uh, a, a good communications going out from, from the centre. In terms of members, we actually do have people from the environment, conservation groups, uh, economy groups, and uh, community groups, but the rural alliances themselves actually span all those three uh, pillars and bring a very, very valuable voice to the table. As a result of all that, we've ended up with, you don't need to read this, a rather complicated looking structure, um, but we're just, you'll see it does say 2014 <laughs> at the top there, uh, we're just trying to make this work. But if you've got that number of people, you need to get your government structures right and make sure the communication between the different groups are going well. In answer to some of the other questions that Manda raises, uh, we have got a green tourism programme using Green Tourism Business Scheme. Uh, we have our own ambassadors that are slightly different. This is more of a sense of place uh, project than Manda's uh, ambassadors. Uh, Walkers are welcome towns, some of you will know about them. We do a lot of work on visitor transport and that's coming up later on today as well, but encouraging people to use the bus network particularly. Um, I mentioned dark skies. Uh, we're trying to drive the sustainability message into our marketing. It's a challenge, but nonetheless, it's about trying to achieve that. And we've nicked the idea of a visitor charter off um, Manda as well. Um, Chair, chair, okay. We like it, so we thought we'd do it, basically, and um, focus very much on this dark skies image, uh, talking about switching lights off and being economical about the way in which guests use electricity um, seem to be a very useful way of going about things. As a result, we've uh, managed to get a number of awards, which we're very proud of. There's the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism in Protected Areas, that's especially for national parks and other protected areas like ourselves. Uh, we've got this Dark Skies International Reserve status. We're a, forest, uh, we're a geopark as part of the European Geopark Network. And again, we're going to be hearing more about geoparks later on. And we're very proud, actually, to get the Green Tourism Destination in the UK Award, uh, 2013 it was, so that's very nice. But I'll come back to it. It's about all these different people working together on the ground, day to day, making things happen. Thank you. <laughs>